Oh, look at that. Now it's a real sandwich. Get it? Sandwich. Oh, sand. Oh, I don't believe it. Why does a beach have sand? Hmm? Well, sand's kind of rock, and the rock is broken up. So it kind of falls down to make a beach. Over thousands of years, this shells crush up into sand. Water washes uh, stones and sand and leftovers up onto the beach. The rocks, they get um, all crumbled up and, the, and they turn into little specks of sand. Hmm. Well, you know, you could be right. But I reckon a beach has sand because it drew the short straw. Sand is such a nuisance that no other place wanted it. Oh, but hang on. You can find sand in the desert, can't you? And on a riverbed. Oh, and in soil. So sand is just about everywhere. Only there's a lot of it on the place we call the beach. Hmm. I think I'd better find out what the sand is exactly. Check this out. One tiny grain of sand. It's lumpy and bumpy and jagged. And I tell you what, it's really hard to see. Hey? Oh. <laughs> a grain of sand is so tiny it can get into the craziest of places, let me tell you. That's better. A grain of sand is so tiny it can be picked up by the wind and carried just about anywhere. Oh. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't taste very nice. It's sort of gritty and hard. Mm. It's a lot like eating dirt, if you ate dirt, that is. And that's because of this. This stuff here is eeny weeny, itsy bitsy, tiny pieces of this stuff here. And this stuff is an eeny weeny tiny piece of that stuff over there. Sand is mostly made up of quartz rock. But how did it get so eeny and weeny? Quartz rock is hard. Quartz rock is hard, but with a little bit of brute force, it can become sand in your hand. Right, now we know what sand is, we still need to answer the question, why does a beach have sand? Let's start back at the beginning. Oh no, no, not at the beginning of the program. I mean the beginning of life as we know it. Scientists believe that thousands of years ago, New Zealand wasn't sitting in the Pacific like it is now. Instead, as the tectonic plates that make up the Earth's surface moved, New Zealand moved too. And a bit of a side effect of moving, New Zealand would sometimes sink below the surface of the water. Now, Stunt Susie's going to help us out with this. Think of her as New Zealand. Miss New Zealand. Now, you ready? Here we go. As New Zealand moved, it was sometimes sitting like it is now, above the surface of the water. Then, occasionally, it would sink under the surface of the water. Then it would rise back up again, and then go below the water. And it would rise back up again, and then sink below the water. And finally, it would rise back up again to be where it is today. Now, that's a lot of water. I wonder if water's got anything to do with why sand is at a beach. I don't know what water does to sand, but look what it's done to my hair and makeup. Oh! Although water can be calm and relaxing and fun to play in, it can also be extremely forceful when prompted. Oh! Oh, no! See what I mean? Never underestimate the power of water. A wave can be lots of fun one minute and then want to play rough the next. And it's not the wave's fault. 
Oh, oh no, you can blame all of that on the wind. How did I know that was coming? No, waves are formed by the wind. The wind blows across the top of the water like this. And it pushes the water in the direction that the wind is going. It pushes the water up into peaks, peaks that we call waves. And the stronger the wind, the stronger the wave. The stronger the wave, the stronger it hits the shoreline. Hey, what's this? A strong wave. What waves can eventually do to a shoreline is amazing, but unless you've got a couple of years and maybe a few spare storms up your sleeve, I think we'll have to do it this way. This is a cliff face made of meringue, sugar. And we've got one fizzy sea. And a few rough windy days. Some long, hot, dry days. Some wet, rainy days. Some cold, freezing days. And every day the wind is pushing the waves up to pound onto the beach and pulverise the cliff into tiny grains of S-A-N-D. Sand. And that's called erosion. So a beach has sand because of erosion. And whenever you get wind and rain and heat and cold at work on an exposed piece of land, especially a cliff base, you get that piece of land being worn away. And the end result is usually sand, which is a good thing too because sand has lots of uses and some of them are fun. Next time you're at the beach, build a sand castle in the tidal zone. That's the area that the waves will be able to come up and get it when the tide comes in. Then sit back and watch erosion take place. You might like to see if you can find some other uses for sand too. Or do some investigating. See if you can find out why on the west coast between Auckland and Wanganui there's black sand. Oh, have you got that black sand? Well, where is it? Great, thank you. Now there's something special about this black sand. There's something in it that's attracted to magnets. Do some investigating with black sand and see if you can find out. Maybe you've got some questions that you'd like answered. You can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307, Birkenhead, Auckland. Or head to the website www.susie.co.nz. And of course, whenever you're at the beach, leave only pictures and take only footprints. So. I think I might have that wrong. I think it's leave only footprints and take only pictures. And anywhere you get Wayne, <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> Wayne and <laughs> and of course, when you're ever at the beach, you need to take only pictures and leave only footprints. No, I've done it again. <laughs> this program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.